Hi everyone, it's Miss Cassidy. So for math this week, we are going to be seeing two topics combined in one. It's called multiplying decimals and problem solving, both combined, okay? So um, these are actually topics we've already seen, but we're gonna see a little bit deeper because we're gonna combine multiplying decimals and problem solving together. So our objectives are to multiply decimals using the partial products um, we use previously learned concepts and skills to represent and solve our problems. And our I can statement is, I can find the product of multi-digit decimals. So, how do you do that? Remember the partial product method, which we will be reviewing in a moment. And two, you can also just use the standard algorithm method, which is your normal way of multiplying, either horizontally or vertically. But if I told you guys before, vertically is the best way to go. So, it's that simple. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I thought I'd go for another presentation, just so you guys can see what I meant. I have a few examples here for the partial products uh, multiplication. It's a quick review, just to remind you guys how to do it. Here are the instructions. In, these, in this Google Slides presentation, follow along with the example to review how to solve multiplication problems using partial products. If you would like, grab a piece of scratch paper and follow along with the examples and solve the example problem. At the end, complete the two multiplication problems using partial products. If you're looking at this electronically, solve the problems on a scratch piece of paper or in your notebook. So let's begin with example number one. Note, I will show the area model on the left while showing how to solve using partial products on the right side so you can see the relation between the two ways. So as you can see, we have an area model for 32 times 61. And remember, how do we use the area model? We divide the area model into four parts according to the amount of digits that you have. So the digits are decomposed by its place value. 30 was decomposed by 30, uh, sorry, 32 was decomposed by 30 in its tens place and two in its ones place. 61 was decomposed into 60 for its ten place and one for its ones place. Step number one, rewrite the multiplication problem vertically. As I said, vertically is the best way to go. Step two, begin to multiply the ones columns. As you can see, I have circled the ones columns to demonstrate that. So you will multiply one times two, which will give you two. Step three, multiply the ones by the tens column. One multiplied by three will give you 30. Why is it going to give you 30? Remember how we talked about that you need to carry that zero? It's very important since it is in the tens place. Step four, multiply the tens by the columns, the ones column. Six times two will give you 60 times two, which will give you 120. Again, remember, you've got to do it according to the place value. So instead of six, it becomes a 60. All of this is also being added, I'm gonna go back for a second. All of this is being added to the area model, see? Two times one, two, because two times one will give you two. One times 30 will give you 30. And 60 times two will give you 120. Finally, in step number five, multiply the tens column. You're going to take the 60 and the 30 and multiply it together, which will give you 1800, as you can see, represented in the area model as well. 30 times 60 will give you 1800. Now you take all of your partial products and you find the answer for your final product. If you add all of these together, you will get 1952, which will be your final product. And if you do the same with the ones that you have in your area model, you should get the same result, 1,952. So that was a quick review on how to do area model with partial products. And look, let's look at one more. Here's an example of three times 425. Again, we begin with the ones place. Three times five is 15. The tens place to the one. 3 times 20 is 60. And then to the hundreds place, 3 times 400 is 1,200. 
We take all of those partial products and we add them together to give us 1,275 as a result. So it's your turn now. I want you guys to do these couple of examples at home with decimal numbers. It'll be the same process. Just remember to carry that decimal point. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did doing it. See you guys in class. Bye.